said it be all. This is Rock Nation. Pledge your allegiance. What's up, everybody? How's it going? We're back on the FX Horror Project again. Hopefully, y'all can hear me. Um, real quick, hashtag Lime into the comments. That's going to give you a chance to... Um, we're going to give away some Metal Flake tonight. And also, I want to show you real quick. We'll be using these. We do have some new uh, six-inch uh, uh, Velcro grip um, scuff pads. So we'll be giving those away tonight, too. So um, once again, just hashtag Lime into the comments, and that will give you a chance to win. And we'll go ahead and spin the wheel on that. So who we got in the house tonight, Ashley? I noticed somebody mentioned your name in there, so you might want to go back and scroll through. Someone mentioned me? Yeah. Hmm. But let's see who we got in here. Who's let's... who's in the house? Oh, yeah. Justin, Bubba, Mayan, the Angry Leprechaun, Donald. Killer Capricorn, Matt, Parrish, Carrie, Christian, Fatlack, JJ, Snapfly, Jeff. Lots of people. Lots of people. All right. We're going today. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the tools and the products that we're going to be using um, when we first start out. But yeah, go ahead in the comments. Um, as long as Ashley can keep up with it, we'll go ahead and answer the questions that you have. But uh, you only have to hit Lime, hashtag Lime in the comments once, and you're in there to win the whole time. Uh, so you don't have to re to rehashtag that every time we, we spin that wheel. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? I can't remember. Anyways, let's, uh, let's go over what, we, what we're going to be using and what we're going to be doing. So on the agenda today is we have, whoa, whoa. Someone did say my someone did say my name in here. Let me just ask this question because he's been missing. So it says, Ashley, I've been missing you. Answer questions for a year and a half now. My paint peel is off to the is off to the middle when I peel the online tape off. Please help me on what I'm doing wrong. Um it's so from the question, it sounds like you're painting on top of metal. So um regular base coat. Um, doesn't stick to metal. So it needs to be prepped like we have here. This has been a prepped with uh, epoxy primer. And then we did the little bit of body work right here, a little bit of Bondo. Um, if you remember that, we did that on the last uh, couple weeks ago on an episode. And then... I still don't think you have a winner, winner wheel on here. Oh, yeah, you go ahead and do that. Well, hold on. We, we'll do it when we're... Uh, and then we'll do the, uh, and then, <laughs> I can't think. Uh, and then we have the, the primer surfacer on top, which that's what we're going to sand. And the primer surfacer is there to build thickness um, and it's sandable. I'm going to sneeze. It's sandable. Uh, that way we can kind of smooth out imperfections. Epoxy primer is more for um, adhesion and corrosion properties to be able to seal off that metal. Also known as a sealer. But yeah, let us know on that question. Um, if you're painting right on top of metal and, and you're trying to do graphics on top of that, um, base coat does not stick to metal. Uh, neither does clear coat. You really need to properly uh, prep it. Can you fix a little? Type in the hashtag line and then we'll collect those. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and since, since everything is in primer, except for the, um, the front guard here, front bearing, 
Now we're gonna go ahead and throw down some adhesion promoter on this. So we have the adhesion promoter, straight to black base coat, and then metal flaked. That's how this one's gonna go. Uh, this is primer surfacer. We gotta sand that down. Same thing here. Same thing with the front fender, and that's it. So we just have those four pieces. Uh, so it should be a pretty easy night. Um, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna get this camera in a little bit closer. Um, I'll go ahead and we'll kind of get in there. I'll show you the different methods that we can use to be able to sand these down to make sure we have one. We have we need to make sure we have good adhesion. And um, the other thing is we need to have a smooth surface for the paint paint to lay down on. Um, so that you don't have any flaws, but here's the thing. The great thing about metal flake is the fact that you can get away with little scratches, little flaws here and there because the flake is so thick um, that it, when it lays down, it kind of just covers everything. So really, if you have imperfections or if you have a little bit of sand scratches, you're going to be able to get away with uh, not being able to see those considering we're metal flaking with a large flake. Now, if you're using a very fine flake, very smooth, very fine, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're sanding these down baby butt smooth. They have to be completely smooth. If you have any little gouge in there, those little tiny um, metal flakes, because they're, they're just a tiny microscopic flakes, what they'll do is they will, um, they will get into like the cracks and the crevices of those little imperfections and um, the light will shine different. Um, especially, like I said, when the, when it's really a fine, uh, flake, uh, or any kind of like a chrome paint or anything like that is going to take on the texture. Uh, but since we're using a large flake, it's the exact opposite. It's going to, uh, be able to cover some of those imperfections. So we don't need to be, um, as, uh, these don't need to be as perfect if we were to do like a diamond white. Uh, base coat on these and then clear them if we were to do a diamond white base coat once again those pearls are super fine super thin they're going to take into the texture and they're going to you're going to be able to see um, those problem areas because of the flake it's shining in different ways but enough of that i did want to explain that hopefully i explained that good did that make sense to you ash i kind of wasn't listening i'm reading these questions okay okay well do you ever shoot flake with an air airbrush Nope. Nope. You need to spray it with a gun. So, so usually when it's considered flake, um, it's with a 1.3 or bigger. Have you ever used flexible primer in the past on plastic? Flexible primer. Uh, I've used uh, acid edge primer and you can use that as well on these. Um, you can use epoxy primer. So yeah, I think a lot of paints nowadays, automotive paints at least are going to be flexible. Maybe there's a brand that's more flexible, but I've never used it if there is. How are they putting candy over bare metal with the with the roll LOC designs in the steel on some of the TikTok videos I've been seeing? Yeah, it um, it's most likely aluminum that they're working on, um, so they can get away without having the primer with the corrosion. Um, but. Yeah, that's, I'm guessing that's, and then they're also using an adhesion promoter, most likely, on top of that bare metal. Um, but if it's still, it's going to rust, it's going to corrode, and it's going to pretty much just, uh, it's going to have some issues down the road. Who knows how long, but, but yeah, most likely it's aluminum they're working on. Hi, Terry. It looks like Terry gifted a membership to Yanny. Welcome to the family. All right, I've got another one. Hooray. Okay, real quick. So since these are in primer, I'm gonna use what they call here is, and most of you probably know about this stuff. It's guide coat. Uh, this is black guide coat. And what this is for is only for a visual guide. This, it looks like a spray paint can, but it's, it's there to spray a light coat over the top so when we sand it, we can see the imperfections better. And we can also see where we've sanded and where we need to sand more. So we'll go ahead and use this. Uh, basically, it's like a powder in a can. What about candy over a chrome powder coat? Yeah, just scuff it down. Yeah, just make sure it's scuffed down really good and clean and you should be able to candy right over that. Okay. 
Is there a decent spray gun under $100 to shoot flake and clear? Uh, yep. You can check out Harbor Freight. Um, I think one of our guns are like 100 and on the sale for like 140 bucks right now. So they're actually going on sale this weekend. Um, uh, the 1.3 gun is going to be 99 bucks. So. The Hemway Automotive Metal Flake Glitter Microfine 1 256. I don't know. Micron Paint Metal Flake. Be a flake you have to smooth out like a baby's butt. Yeah, you you do. If it's the finer the flake, and the the like, some of these like orange or even if it's a red metal metal flake, or if, it, if it's a paint a metallic paint with really fine flakes in it, you need to make sure that that um, the surface is completely smooth. Um, unlike what we're doing now, we're gonna get away with a lot. Really, we just need to make sure it's scuffed down so that the the base coat has something to grab onto. Because right now, base coat's not gonna really want to stick to this without some kind of a a scratch, an etch. It needs that that next coat needs something to grab onto, and a little bit of that the scratched up primer is what it grabs onto. The other way that you can get paint to adhere is if we were to primer the is with sealer. We have about an hour window that we can just lay the base coat right on top, and then there's a, a chemical uh adherence between the two um considering that the uh the primer sealer is still uh open enough in order for the solvents when they go on the top they bond as one chemically so there's chemical adhesion and there's mechanical adhesion we're gonna go and do mechanical adhesion because we're gonna scuff this down give it a scratch so once again paint has something to grab onto let's spray some of this sealer here I'll get you guys a little closer, huh? It looks like there's a lot of people have birthdays in April. Birthdays? Yeah, Carrie, Bubba, Daryl, looks like there's a few other people I think I may have missed. And you. And me. So happy birthday to all the April birthday peeps, all the Aries. And that's me. Okay, let's... Yeah, I'll go ahead and see here. Once again, it's just like powder in a can. You can use spray paint too, but it's kind of almost kind of hard to get off. Looks like Terry gets us some nail from my ship. Wow! Welcome to the family. Raymond. Yeah. So with that membership, you um, on the Big Cartel website, you do get a discount um, off of all the products on there. They're limelight. And um, yeah, every once in a while I, we do giveaways and stuff and uh, some extra content for you guys. Mom um, said, so you I played it out my surfboard recently. I can see some areas seem darker than others. What did I do wrong? Maybe I didn't keep the plane suspended in the cup. Like suspended in the cup. Should have kept shaking it up maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that would be the problem. Usually the, the flake stays pretty shook up um but yeah he, you are right if you if you lay it down let it sit it will it will do that um you may have sprayed it too heavy usually if you spray it too heavy it gets like that but really okay let me show something real quick see let me see see like this little imperfection right here it's just a little gouge oh, actually there's one right there too okay so if we were to sand this and not get that out and we were to spray this with say an orange metallic base coat that's going to show it's even if you even if you were to take clear coat and clear coat it and smooth it all the way over so it's bridged over so you could not fill that with your hand that would still show so with that so it's very important that when you're doing these like I said, these these metallic jobs that have really fine metallics, you need to make sure you get those out. And that's what the guide code is for, is when you sand this, you'll see that little groove in there. So, yeah. Somebody asked, how does the discount work on the website? This became a member tonight. Um, yeah, so um, the discount code, you'll see it right there on the uh, membership uh, YouTube. And then it's just the limeline at bigcartel.com, and then there's a discount code there. So it does work on just on that one platform. 
Uh, but, uh, but yeah, type that in, you'll get that discount. For now, right? We're trying to For get now, it we're, we're trying to get it on the Shopify as well. What process do you use to clear over decals? Having trouble getting rid of my edge around the decal. I already have so many coats of clear. Um, when he says decal, is it a decal that you stuck? Or is it a decal that... Yeah, so if you, if you, if you laid down a decal and cleared it, um, you may need to just scuff it down and then clear coat it again uh, to be able to get that edge down. Do you ever use powder coat, powder dye coat? Uh, no, I did. Uh, I've never used it personally, but I've always kind of liked the can. So like, and it lasts a while. You don't need to use that much. See how these sand scratches are in there? This is where we did the body work. The guy who asked the question earlier about the tape or the metal plate pulling up the tape, he says, see, I did this stuff. My primer, then base coat of the lime line products, then metal plate, three coats of lime line clear coat. And when I did my graphics and pulled the tape, the paint came off to the metal. Off of the metal. So <clears throat> um, if it was a new... Uh, like a brand new repop fender, they come with like an oil on them. You need to make sure you get every ounce of that oil off. Um, but yeah, so where whatever the, the layer that came off is the layer that fell. So it sounds like if you have bare metal showing, it's the epoxy that failed, which is surprising to be honest, because epoxy is the strongest layer in all of that. Um, it's, it's the name really, it's epoxy. So it's, it's like a, a glue primer. Uh, so yeah, I mean, also you need to scuff down that metal. Um, but I couldn't imagine that doing it either. Uh, but yeah, you get with me, show me some pictures and see what's up. But, um, uh, usually what I've found is, especially on these styles of fenders, um, or anything like that, they, they come with just with a, a packing lube on it so they don't rust. It makes it a pain in the butt for us painters to try to get all that out. Have you ever done any more with the urea crystals? Uh, I haven't done anything for a while. No, with that. I'm not happy with you. I went on Prime Warp Channel binge last weekend, and now I've got my dino cart with pins all over my living room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It happens. It happens. Well, but good luck on your surgery the 23rd. I hope it goes well. Okay, we got those guide coated. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can get these sanded in a, in a way that we can get these sanded really fast. Because we don't really care if all the imperfections are gone. Because we're metal flaking it with big flake. All right. Step one. Get out of here. A million questions just come at me. I'm trying to get everybody. I hope I can. But Jeremy said, Ashley is like, oh, all the chat chatter. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure everyone gets their question answered, too. Well, you uh, you can pick them. You don't have to answer them all. Okay. Where's well, that's the... not very nice. <laughs> that's not very nice. <laughs> that's the truth, though. Okay, where are we at? Oh, all right, all right. I'm going to show you the three different methods that we can use in order to sand this so we do have the uh the lime line uh, sanding sponge this has two different uh densities of uh foam so the black's a little bit harder uh, the yellow's a little bit softer but let me show you real quick this is 600 grit you want to line that up right with the edge there so that way you can do detail work right on this edge and that'll fold over like that so, and then once it wears out right there, you can just move it down the line and then you would hold it right there. So you can kind of pinch that off and then really you'd hold it together right there with the finger, with your one of your fingers, any finger you want. Mike Manning sent a $20 super chat. Woo! Thanks for all you guys do for us. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And also Randy missed a $10 super chat. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, so once again, this is 600 grit. 
Have you ever used any of the latest UV primers? Uh, no, it's really cool though. It, it dries really fast. For production shops, I feel like that would be uh, a pretty cool deal. Can you flake over powder coat? Yeah, you can. You just need to make sure it's scuffed down good enough. What CFM does your 1.3 gun put out? Uh, the 1.3. You'll have to you have to email us at Limeline on that one. Uh, I have all the specs, but I don't have them in front of me. Any advice on cleaning without a booth in a garage to help stop dust nibs and dirt from getting in your paint? Well, I mean, dust dust nibs and dirt are going to happen even if you're in a paint booth. Uh, you just need to know what to do after you get them. Um, and usually, when it comes to custom paint, you need to cut and polish your parts anyways, and that's going to take care of those dust nibs. But you do want less of them. You don't want a dirty paint job to have to deal with, you know, when you go to polish it. So, uh, you know, just making sure you're, you're hooking up a good ventilation fan um, going outside of your garage, uh, wet down the floor. Um, and then the biggest thing is wear a paint suit like this that doesn't, um, it doesn't attract lint and um, it doesn't have a static charge to it. Because when you... When you go to spray, a lot of the stuff that come, will come off of your shirt and like into the stream of paint off of like centrifugal pressure or something. I don't know if I said that right, but saying I did. Okay, real quick, I wanna show them something, Ash. Right here, so you can see what the guide coat's doing here. Let me wipe it out. Now we can see. So we're able to see all the imperfections, see the orange pill. We're not going to worry too much about the orange pill because, like I said, we're spraying larger flakes. So we're going to get away with, with that. See these sand scratches right here that we use from the, we can see from the bodywork. Just by lightly grazing over that with the sandpaper, you can see. Oh. you can see the sand scratches. So if you were to paint over that, like and not get the, all those out, because that, all that needs to be primer. See, that's the guide coat that's like stuck inside the sanding grooves. So that's the same, I mean, it looks smooth here, right? I mean, it looks pretty smooth everywhere, but then that really shows you what's going on. Any tips on how to straighten a slightly bent needle? Uh, yeah, you can use, uh, what's it called? There's a little device. Sharpen air is what it's called. And you stick it in this little device and it um, basically sharpens it, straightens it out. Sharpen air? Sharpen air, yep. It's green, lime green. It's a pretty cool little pro product. Well, okay. I think I've seen that before. Yeah, I have it. I like have one. Box thing? Yeah. I use mine all the time. I like it sometimes when I want to like, especially when I had my micron, I always kind of like sharpened it up before I did anything serious, but it's been a long time since I painted like that. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Um, you can go throughout the whole thing, wet sand it. Um, takes a little more time, but if you're brand new to this, to painting, this is the way to start really, because it is slower, but you have a lot more control here and you know around your edges and if you burn through you i mean you're not going all crazy when you're doing it by hand it's a slow process and you're gonna get all smoothed out yeah someone just asked um a good question what is your typical sanding grit progressions i've heard so many different things from different painters mm -hmm. it all depends on the base coat that you're spraying on top if you're spraying black base coat you can get away with a lot of sand scratches because the magic about black, once you clear it, those little imperfections also will not show because there's no pearl or metallic or anything in order to get in those grooves to be able to show that there's something there. Um, so if you're painting black, I'm gonna treat the prep different than like I said, I was, if I was painting like a, like a, like a silver or a silver metallic with a fine, a fine metallic in it. But okay, there we go. Did that did I answer that? Was that good? Oh, no, the progressions of the uh, uh, yeah. six, 
Yeah, so 600 grit is what I like to do. Um, but then when it comes to uh, when it comes when it comes to metal flake, you can also use 400 grit, or you can even get away with maybe. But 400 grit would be a little faster, and you're not going to be able to see those sand scratches uh, once again. Uh, I like 600 grit all around, um, pretty much on everything. If I'm sanding on top of clear coat to be able to re-clear coat it, I like to use 800 or 1,000 grit. Um, that way, I can make sure that that sanding and residue is not getting driven into the clear coat, because sometimes that can happen where if you're sanding clear with 400 and go to re-clear it there's a lot of grit there and some of that sanding residue can get kind of stuck in those and it makes it look a little fuzzy and you won't notice it until later hey darren what's up and he had a question he just wanted to know if we are going to be getting an airbrush in uh we've been testing some airbrushes we have that trigger airbrush but i don't know i mean it's a very fine instrument and we have been having trouble trying to find the right manufacturer. But uh, let it be known, if I do sell an airbrush, it's going to be good. There's, there's just a lot of problems with them. You know, like the cap not fitting right, or the needle's too flimsy, or um, the packing doesn't hold up, or you know, maybe it leaks a little bit, uh, or maybe it just doesn't last, is what a, a lot of it is. Okay, so I'm going to use a DA sander here, which is a six inch lime line DA sander. It's also an interface pad. And what this is going to do, that's going to connect there so we have um, some give so we can, we can uh, go, we can sand over contour better, you know, because it kind of like has a spongy action there. We take the, what is this? This is 800 grit. We'll take the 800 grit. We'll stick it to there and make sure that nothing's. Hanging over. Oh, that's good. Daryl, he put his, uh, <laughs> he's the one that, <laughs> I got to tell you this story. Remember last week, well, I think it was last week or the week before. I don't know. I'm getting all mixed up. He's the one that said, gosh dang, who's ever doing your big cartel packing, sending a lot of stickers. And we told him just to stick them everywhere. Uh -huh. He changed his name to Daryl Stickers. <laughs> I love it. That's so funny. I hope there's stickers all over where you live, Daryl. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> all right, so we're going to use 800 grit. And this makes it a little easier because we don't have to, you know, wear out our rotator cuff by doing all that sanding action. <laughs> to use an oil-free air compressor or is it not necessary? Um, you don't want to use a compressor that runs off of oil. Wait a minute. If, it, if you have a, um, a motor that runs on oil, like the pump, yes, that's actually the one you want because it the, has the external pump on it. The oilless compressors are usually like the single piston flat. They're, they don't fill up as fast. So it sounds like you're about, you're, you're doing it right. I gotta get some work done. We're gonna be here all night.
about smacking that sandpaper on there every single time it's like pulling the trigger on the drill when you pick it up. I said, most definitely, he does it every single time. Gary <laughs> gets another membership tonight. What oh, yeah. Gary? It's like Christmas. All right, so you can see that now our imperfections are starting to show. Right there, there's one. That's a pretty big one, actually. Um, and then there's just a lot of orange peel, right? Because the primer has orange peel in it, that biggie. But uh, you see all the sand scratches there from the body filler. Um, that's all fine. We would just keep working on that and get that down a little bit smoother. But once again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, let me get this side right here a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you the other uh, scuffing pads, and I can show you how fast that is. using 800 bit, right? right yep, now? I'm using 800. I could be using 600 right now or even 400 and be going a little bit faster. Good. I mean, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with this oh, red scuff pad. Uh, let's go ahead and after I do this, we'll go ahead and give something away. And we'll go ahead and give these away with the metal flake. But I'll go and use the interface pad as well. Let's give away the interface pad too on that. So you'll win three of these, uh, one of the interface pads and a pack of metal flake. wet or dry. I like to use a wet. See how fast that works. These things are really incredible. I love, I'm so glad we're adding these to the, the product line because I've always liked them. They've been hard to get a hold of. Um, in fact, I've been looking for them for over a year and I finally found um, the supplier that made them in five inch. And then I worked with them to be able to make them in six inch, um, which is six inch is gonna be the standard um, in automotive. Five inch is going to be more like woodworking and stuff like that. So if you're ordering anything, make sure it's six inch um, for automotive. But you can see how nice, how smooth that out compared to the other side. You can see that. Let's clean it up. Just some imperfections there. We'll go ahead. Once again, this is not. Um, this is a, a scuffing pad. It's not a sanding pad. This is going to act different than the sandpaper. The sandpaper is actually going to smooth it out. This is actually going to put a scuff into it. 
it does slightly smooth it out as well, but it's not like what sandpaper does. Sandpaper cuts it down smooth and even. This is more like a scratching, scoring pad that is going to make sure that we have really good adhesion of the paint to the surface. Somebody said, I usually use a gray stock right now. I thought the red was a little too aggressive. Not, um, not my opinion. Maybe, uh, maybe if you're doing chrome paint, I, I think that's the only thing that would be the exception for that. Adam's Custom Shop sent a $200 super chat. What? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I know we talked a little bit about doing some, some giveaway stuff, but um, Adam's the, uh, he owns the, uh, maybe you'll have to remind me because it's been a minute now, but he does have that uh, apparel brand. Um, I was wearing that yesterday with the pink. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously met him through Instagram. Uh, Thanks, great Adam. dude, yeah, appreciate that. He's probably out in... Iraq or something, working on helicopters, from what I understand. Oh, dang. Yeah, maybe he'll can clarify on that a little bit more. But yeah, hey, appreciate that. That's yeah, super cool so to do that. Yeah, thank you to everybody. Let's keep going here. Might just finish it up real quick with a sanding sponge. I'll grab one of those. Adam's custom shop said, "Give away some stuff, lock that load." <laughs> In the U.S. now this week, and I'm able to see your Thursday night live videos. Pretty cool. Oh, badass! He's back. Come on, dude. I'm gonna use a sanding sponge to kind of get into uh, some of the harder to get areas. To make sure that there's a good enough grit. Yeah, I do home mistake. Do you sell a dry flake gun? No, nah, I don't prefer to do any dry flaking myself. And uh, yeah, big mess. Uh, a lot of ways. But, I mean, it's not a wrong way to do it. Like, some people prefer to do it that way, and I can understand that. Um, but it, it does leave a lot of texture as well. There's a lot of downfalls to blowing it on. Because when it lays on, because you're blowing it on the wet clear coat, they're laying it all kind of crazy angles. Which, don't get me wrong, it does look good. Because um, you have to have flakes kind of laying at different angles. But, man, it's a, it's a pain in the butt to really get those to... To smooth out because you have to put so much clear coat on it. Really, you have to clear coat it after that and then um, sand it down and clear coat it again right after. All right, we're going to get this cleaned up. I'll kind of just get it a little bit cleaned up. We'll hang it up in the booth and then I'll spray some glass cleaner on there. So there we go. Okay, uh, next, we got these two. 
fenders. I'm just going to blast these out real quick with the same method. Uh, once again, it is just kind of scoring it, and it's not really smoothing it out, but these are in pretty decent shape. And once again, we're spraying metal flakes, so we're going to be able to get away with a lot more. Use our sanding sponge to get into the tight areas. Some of the Ohio has quite have quite a bit of temperature changes this time of year. What activator do you use in different temperatures? Um, uh, to be honest with you, I just always stick with a medium um, reducer and also a medium hardener throughout everything. Uh, I've never really had an issue with it. Uh, sometimes when you're spraying big parts like a whole car, it, it does matter because how long it takes for that to activate. Um, you, if it activates too fast, you can't get around the whole car and spray in and melt in that edge in time. So you need to slow down the uh, materials a little bit. So uh, that's a good question. It all kind of depends. You kind of have to experiment with it. Um, ask local painters what they use. Um, I've always stuck with a medium on everything and I've never kind of veered away from that unless there was something out of stock. Um, other than that, I've always just used medium. Okay, this one's done. It's quick. Oh, maybe a little more right there. Okay, so you can see there's like, see there's still like a little imperfection right there. Uh, let's see if we can get the right angle on it. Little tiny stuff like that um, is you're going to be able to get away with that. There it is right there. Just a little gouge. That'll go away. Those flakes are, are about that size. And once they hit and they overlap, it's pretty much going to be gone. But in a uh, real world, world scenario, this would need to be completely smoothed out. Uh, using that particular pad is not the way to go. You're going to want to use either like we did earlier with hand sanding it or uh, using the DA sandpaper. Yeah, someone said, I'm planning on the paint red white. It has a grayish matte finish. Can I just scuff and shoot? Well, you rat walking into the Hold on. Uh, Pause for that answer. Uh, no, I heard it. I heard it. Uh, <laughs> yes. Heard? Spray. So, yeah. You see it's painted right now, matte finish. So, yeah, you could, you scuff it down. You clean it, scuff it down, clean it again, and you can go straight to paint. I'm going to talk to this one real quick. So do you want me to do it? Uh, what do you do that? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do it and you do it anyway. Okay. I knew you could do it anyway, but thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Go ahead and stand over there. Okay, you. okay. Okay. Who won it? Who won it? Let's see. Michael Enos. Michael Enos. Good job. You did it.
you want yourself some uh, interface pad, three of these pads that I'm using right here, and then also uh, a bag of the metal flake. Um, yes, you can, but you need to re-clear it afterwards. You're going to need to make sure you sand that and prep that single stage after it's dry. Harrison, I hope someday soon you do a live on your line of powder pigments. I've seen your post videos and would like to know more about them, something more in depth. Okay, yeah, I can probably do that. We're actually going to be using a lot of the pigments on this bike. Um, even though we're metal flaking all these parts, it's really going to be like a pretty small part of the overall graphics on this. Uh, I still haven't exactly figured out what I'm going to do, but I know I do want to implement metal flake into the mix. So when you, when you spray flake, that's the first thing you need to do. You spray the flake and then transparent colors and other graphics can go over the top. Whether you're going to cover the metal flake with a pigmented paint or whether you're going to dye the metal flake with a transparent candy. You could do either or, you know. When I started painting my bike skins, I started with spray cans from Walmart. Now I found out about bad reactions between different types of paints. Exactly. How important is it and should I sand it all off? Yes, you need to make sure you get it all off. Um, and if you strip it off with a stripper, just make sure that you're getting all the stripper off too, because they'll uh, it'll get around the edges and um, it'll affect your paint after the fact. You know, so yes, all if you if anything spray painted, don't don't paint over the top of it. Make sure you take it off because you're going to have problems later. Yeah, spray paint's just not the same. Okay, looking good. We'll go ahead and set this in there. getting ready to flake those so when he's um he is gonna flake them so he's after he sands them he's went in the booth and he's hung them so you're at a point to watch yep we are almost there so you have the front fairing here which we need to spray some adhesion promoter on this Rob, what product do you use to clean hair tins from shipping oil um you can use a wax and grease remover but you're 
you really need to like do it three times like you need to and then get and use new rags every time um, you can also use uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for Uh, don't know. Wax and grease, remember? No, it's a solvent. It's not lacquer thinner. It's paint thinner. Yeah, but the, I mean, lacquer thinner, lacquer thinner. Yeah, I don't know if that'll work, but yeah. Wax and grease remover with a bottle. Uh oh. We got black, but black. I'm back. I'm just checking these edges. I'm just hitting this one more time to make sure that we're gonna have good adhesion on this thing. We don't want the paint filling. Cause like if you weren't to sand, say or scuff it up into here and it's still kind of shiny, you will have problems, especially right there because the paint's gonna want to shrink and then it just pulls up right there. And that's right where their windshield hits. So it wants to put pressure on that. These are like very, very famous spots. Uh, for these to start peeling. So make sure you just really get up into those areas. And then same with this right here, you know, it's, it's really easy not, it's really easy not to hit that. Acetone? Is that the word you're thinking of? Acetone, yes. That's the word I was thinking of. Yes, acetone works great for that. This water cleaned up here. What about spray paint primer? That's not good to use either. Um, you know, you if it was an overall primer, you wouldn't want to use it. Uh, like you need to primer the whole part. But if there's a little bit of spot primer that you need to do, say like you've already primered something, um, or say like you sanded stock paint and you ended up have to sand a chip out, but you sand it down to bare metal in order to get that chip smoothed out. You can use a little bit of spot can primer on those, um, and it's not a big deal. But if you're doing it overall, like like we did here, you would not want to use spray can. You may not have a reaction, um, but you also don't have the protection. Is the filler placed on top of the base layer or vice versa? Is the, say that one more time. Filler placed on top of the base layer or vice versa? Um, the body filler, yeah, it's, it's, we, we actually put it, we sandwiched it in between the epoxy primer and the sandable primer surfacer on the top. So that body filler is actually right in the center of the, that's really the, the bulletproof way to really do that is to sandwich that, that body filler in between those two products. Because really you need the sandable primer surfacer on top of that body filler to be able to have enough thickness of primer to be able to sand it to get the sand scratches out you know if you have sand scratches in something and even if you buried it in a bunch of um paint primer you're still going to see the sand scratches they're still going to be there you actually have to wait for it to dry to sand it smooth to make both uh layers uniform the same level that makes sense? I think that makes sense. So clean this up a little bit more. This is the last piece and then we'll get to mixing up some base coat and we'll be going over the different products. We'll be spraying the gun and we'll get ready to spray some metal flake. Give these guys another view here. There we go. Just like that. Well, look at that. I can answer questions and not hold the camera. Aren't you so smart? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. 
I'm not done with you yet. Okay, look at that. I haven't cleaned my my uh, door window, so you guys can see. That looks great, doesn't it? Fresh glass or metal flake? We're using metal flake. I need to clean my booth. I need to repaint it. Do something with the floor. It's getting pretty filthy, but okay. Does it still really have a top sign? Are we about to flee leaf when the furnace kicked on and blew the leaf out of the folder? Oh no. Does uh, it have a top sign? No, it does not. Both sides are made the same. Oh boy. I'm sure that. That happens to me sometimes too. It'll slip out of the folder and lay on the ground. Usually it lands in one chunk. Talk about make it rain. I'm sure that looked like lots of things. Yeah. <laughs> What compressor are you running? Uh, it's a Harbor Freight uh, two-stage, two-stage pump. They don't sell them anymore. Boo. They do sell a different one that'll work though. It's not big. What air filter and air dryer do you use? Um, I'll go over that just in a second. Hi, Mr. C. Glad to see you're on. That's okay if you're late. <laughs> I was almost late today. paint like uh, three times a week now, maybe, maybe four times a week. Uh, and my last months, months and months. But if you have a lot of water in your uh, compressor, um, obviously it's probably gonna fill it up with water faster and wear out faster. Now I don't, I don't actually have any kind of filter besides the inline filter. Um, I just make sure I drain my compressor uh, every now and again. So usually every two months or so I'll drain my compressor and then I'll always use either uh, one of these these are disposable but uh, like we said if you're using them every day like in a, a collision shop or you're painting day in and day out this will probably last a, uh, two or three days um, if you're really hard on them and it all depends if you if you have a pre-filter um, these could last a lot longer because basically the air is already clean before it even gets to it is there a specific glass cleaner you use uh, there is, I just lost the lid to that. Um, uh, I just like to use any glass cleaner, really. It doesn't matter. 3M has just a regular glass cleaner that works fine. Come and clean this one last thing.
Okay. Let's move on over here. All right, here. For a first timer paint job, do you think they should keep it simple or go big or go home and do a two tone type of paint job? I would, uh, I would, you know, do whatever interests you. I would go, I would try it. I would try it all. Go big or go home. Go big or go home, yeah. As long as, you, as long as you're gonna be happy with your results and know yeah, you're new. Everybody's saying the same thing. I mean, you'll surprise yourself in more cases than not. You'll be like, I had no clue I had that in me. Because it's really not that hard. Okay, we're gonna be using uh, the 1.4 Pro Gun, this HVLP. And it does have that disposable filter that we talked about earlier. Um, so the metal flake does, it does say 1.4 plus uh, size right there. 1.4. Uh, we, we are using 1.4, but it actually does work in a 1.3. So if you have 1.3, don't worry about going out and buying a 1.4. But the instructions are right here. Basically, we are uh, mixing one packet with 16 ounces of clear coat. Um, if you don't need that much, you can just do partial package. And then it's not like... There's no hard rules with this. Um, you can mix as much as you want really in there. It's not going to make a difference. Uh, it, once you get to too much, then maybe you could have an adhesion problem. So don't go over the 16 ounces per one packet. Uh, and that's really, really it. Once it's dry, sand is smooth, 600 grit, and then you're ready to use the, the tapes and the airbrushes. And we'll go ahead and show you some of that as well. Like um, some of the possibilities uh, what you can do afterwards. I do have like a, a tank that's just about finished that I have a video that's coming out. I'll show you that coming up. Uh, but yeah, there's the metal flake. There's the gun. We are using the uh, disposable system here. So it does have that connection there. And then you have the disposable cups that slips into the hard cup. And then we can go ahead and mix up um, our black base coat. Uh, is the 1.4 gun the one that's going to be on sale? Uh, the 1.4 gun will be on sale too. It just, I don't think it's going to be 99 bucks. Uh, about 150, I think is what that will be. All right. So black base go. So black base coat is different than spray paint. It's different than clear coat. And it's obviously different than primer. It's going to spray different. It's going to act different. It's going to dry different. Um, and it has different properties. Base coat doesn't have any kind of protection. It doesn't have any clear in it to protect it from anything. So basically all we're doing is spraying down the color. And then it's, it, it relies on us to um, clear coat it with a uh, two-part clear coat to be able to protect it over the top. So base coat, clear coat. In this case, we're going to do base coat clear coat mixed with the metal flake. And then we're gonna go straight to clear coat after that to help smooth it out. And I'll kind of show you that whole process. Now, base coat, uh, when it comes, it comes thicker than what we need it. So in order to thin out base coat, we use urethane reducer. Urethane reducer, all it's really good for is to thin your paint out so it can be sprayed through your gun. So that paint was really thick. If we were to put that a lid on that, put it on the top of this without putting any kind of reducer, um, it would just splatter out because it's too thick. It's taken too long to go out the gun. And um, unless you have a massive amount of air pressure pushing it out, that paint's gonna be way too thick um, to just shoot straight out. So we use urethane reducer. Once that's sprayed on, all of that's going to evaporate. So this doesn't even stay on once we're done. This is all gonna evaporate out and what's gonna be left is the, um, the pigment, which is in a binder, but basically an intercoat clear. Same thing, um, it's all there, but once again, we need to protect it with a clear coat. So one to one on that. Once again, there's no hard rules uh, when it comes to thinning it out, we're basically, it's not, it's not uh, doing any kind of chemical reaction or anything like that. It's not changing the, the way the paint is. All, you're, all it's doing is making it thinner so we're able to spray it smooth. Just 
mix that up. God fearing man said he sprayed his metal flake, our metal flake, uh, although he used the base coat binder instead of the clear coat. Yes, yeah, so you can do that. Uh, the one issue with doing it is that there's, there's, there's uh, positive things to that and there's negative things to that. You can use a base coat binder or an inner coat clear and put your flake right into that. The problem is, is it creates more of a texture. Those flakes are landing all kind of crazy um, angles because base coat dries fast. Um, it doesn't have a chance to level out. So the flake's not leveling now. When we're spraying it into the clear coat, it has a chance to lay down and smooth out. We'll kind of go over that a little bit later because we're gonna have some dry times where we're gonna be able to talk a little bit. Uh, someone asked, okay, so you made your black with your powder pigment? Nope, this is just straight black um, out of the can. We sell that black base coat. We don't sell, we sell the black base coat, yes. Uh, black base coat doesn't come in a pigment powder. Any it would hardener? take a long powder to do that. Any hardener? No hardener in base coats, nope. In most base coats. Once again, we're, we are relying on the clear coat to be able to protect all these layers that we're doing. Okay, let's see what this is spraying like. Is it going clean? Looks clean. I'm going to snap that thing on. I'll give it a little shake to make sure it's mixed up there now. Grab my mask. We'll get you guys pointed in the right direction. UK clear for flake, clear base for candies. Yes, correct. But you can also use clear base for flake too. It's just going to create more texture and a little more work. The way that I'm doing it here is better because, like I said, it flows out a little better. It's less work. All you got to do is once it's dry, you sand it smooth. You're ready to go straight to graphics. If you're blowing it on, the flake on, you're going to need to let it dry, and then you're going to have to clear it again, and then you would be able to um, start the graphics. Same thing with the inner coat clear or the clear base coat. Mixing them in that, like I said, it makes more texture, so you may have to go another round of clear coat even after the one we're gonna do to be able to get it smooth enough to get your flake smooth enough to be able to get your tape to stick to that. Okay. This, this. <laughs> hard wire what hard wire medical read a question he said Obama, a little confused about what tip sizes you use for what primer, sealer, paint, clear, and furls. That's what I was saying. So, and then he wrote, I am not Obama, damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the tip size for base coats, you can use anything from a um, an airbrush um, all the way to a 1.4. I wouldn't go anything bigger than a 1.4 with base coats. Uh, clear coats, you're going to be... Usually, um, you can go all the way down to a point. When I said point zero, point eight spray gun, which is like the mini gun, and then you can go. Um, oh, I'll go back to the base coats. The base coats you can go all the way up to the uh, one point four uh, primers. You can do um, all of once again if you thin it out a little bit more with urethane reducer. You can use the mini gun, the point eight mini gun, and you could also use all the way up to about a two point zero when it comes to primers, because some of those primers have fillers in them, almost like a body filler that you would need really thick nozzles to be able to spray that out. So you, I mean, even, I haven't really heard much bigger than a 2.0, but um, primers can be sprayed out of stuff that thick. And then a uh, clear coat's gonna be uh, 1.3 or 1.4 in most cases. Could be even a 0.8, uh, as long as you can also reduce that a little bit. All right, I'm gonna use some adhesion promoter. The adhesion promoter, everything that we have in there is good. We got primer on that, that, that. This is the odd one out. Paint does not like to stick to, to plastic, <clears throat> especially base coats. Um, so we're gonna rely on some adhesion promoter. And this is plastic adhesion promoter that we're gonna be able to spray this on a light coat, just on that, um, to be able to give it uh, a more tack. It's going to give it a bite for the base coat to be able to stick to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick.
okay, I just gave that two light coats. Well, they, we call them a tack coat in, in the industry. Um, tack coat is just a light coat. Um, we're not trying to get full coverage on, or anything. Um, since we're spraying light coats, they dry really fast. Stuff dries super fast. I was able to do two coats just like that. So we're good to go. We're going to let that flash off. We want to make sure that we do not lay any paint on this while it's wet. Got to make sure it's dry. So we'll give that a few minutes. I'll go ahead and switch on the booth. We already have the black in the gun. So we'll, um, we'll switch on that booth and I'll get in there and we'll, we'll get painting. So do you use the black base to do the shadows on the paint lines on top of the clear after flake? Let's say that one more time. Do you use the black base to do the shadows on the tape lines on top of the clear after flake? Yes, that's correct. Yep. You can use black base. You can use candy. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll edge it out either with a black base or a candy, black candy. Uh, but usually the dark or a darker candy, like a purple, uh, dark blue or something like that, if you're going with the blue shades. Would a pancake compressor be enough to spray with? No. Nope, I don't think so. Yeah, if you go to Harbor Freight, sorry about the noise guys, but if you go to Harbor Freight, um, you'll be able to, you'll find the, there's a smaller compressor, but it does have the double pump. It has a pump that goes like, like this. There's a pump that way, and a double pump that way, and it has the external motor over here, and then the pumps over here, so that, and then there's a belt that runs, and then these pump like that. Rather than the oilless compressor is all kind of like one big block unit, and it has like little tiny pistons that I don't know, doesn't work, doesn't fill up as fast. Even if it has a big tank, those little uh, oilless compressor motors just aren't very strong they're not they don't just don't they don't work very fast but hopefully that helps okay black face go lime line 1.4 yeah make sure it's mixed up good enough grab my respirator All right, let me take you guys in the booth so I can show you what um, a first coat of base coat looks like. A lot of people, when they want, when they spray paint, they they want to be able to like do it in one coat, and that's not really the way it works. You can end up having a lot of problems, like with uh, chemical reactions when you're laying that much wet paint and not letting it flash off. Like once again, we talked a little bit about the reducer here, and the reducer is used to be able to thin out the paint. But if you spray the paint on so thick that this reducer is laying on top of the paint, it's going to, like I said, it's gonna sit there on that paint and it's going to maybe react with it. It shouldn't, but um, but if you do have any kind of issues, 
Um, it could be because you're applying the paint way too fast. Um, this should be done in three, uh, I prefer four coats to get it to full coverage. But you can see, that's what a good first coat should look like. I mean, we're probably about 50% coverage, maybe a little less, 40. But as you can see, I sprayed that on so light that it's already dry. It's already dry and ready for another coat. This is already black, so um, actually that one coat will do it for that. Maybe I'll put one more on and we'll be good. Uh, we almost had that on camera. All right, let me show you what coat two looks like. You can see that it's still not all the way covered. A couple specks here, you know, just here and there. All in all, it looks still needs more. So once again, it's already dried because I've sprayed such light coats. Um, base coat is. You're going to use less material by spraying lighter because then you're not going to saturate it so thick that it, it's uh you just got a lot of wasted paint so um thinner coats when it comes to base coat for the fact that it's drying faster and um paint same paint two tips you just the fairing, right? i just got the fairing yes and an adhesion promoter. Okay, we're already ready for another coat. Okay, we're gonna be good with that. So one thing real quick, if, if this was to stay black base coat and I was gonna clear this without flaking it, I would definitely put another one to two coats on this. Um, 
it's so easy to be able to miss the little spots here and there and you really won't see them until it's out in the sun once it's clear coated and you're going to see like a little bit of speckled primer and like oh man i missed it and then you got to go back maybe you already polished it and everything and then you got to go back and scuff it down to, to put more black on it just to re-clear it um so if you if you're if it's a one solid color and you're ready to go um make sure you have extra base coat on there to give you a little bit extra layers there to make sure you have full coverage. How do you dispose of the extra layer more than paint? Usually I just let it dry up or I'll put a lid. Like the base coat, since it doesn't have a hardener in it, this is just base coat with urethane reducer to make it thin. There's no part A, part B to this. So it's not gonna chemically harden. It will, however, harden air dry like this is. It's drying through air dry. Well, as long as we cap this, um, we'll just basically right here, we'll just pull this back out. And then we have little caps that we can cap this and we can reuse, especially being black. We use black all the time, cap it, and it's good to go on the next thing that you're spraying black or that particular graphic, or you can pour a little bit in your airbrush. You know, whatever. What if you just want to spray clear coat on headlights? Uh, can you suggest that? Yeah, you can do that. Yep, you can, uh, and that will, a lot of people do that and what that'll do is if you have those if it's like scuffed up or worn out you know you can uh you can hit that with clear coat and it'll uh bring it back to life have you ever used black epoxy primer and skipping the uh no but you can do that and actually we, we are going to be getting black epoxy primer as well but yes black epoxy primer going straight to flake that would work as well. When's the best time to wet sand? Uh, I would wait at least 24 hours to wet sand. Um, pretty much any time after 20, 24 hours to wet sand for to reco. Now, if you're going to wet sand to uh, polish, you want to do that within like three days or so. You don't want that clear coat to get super rock hard. And then it's going to be a little bit harder to polish that out. I would. Disposable cup. All right, so let's mix up some flake, huh? We're gonna take the clear coat, which is, uh, all clear coat is acrylic urethane clear coat. That's what this is. This is just a standard overall clear coat um, mixed at a four to one ratio. You can see right here has all the instructions, the dry times, um, all that, um, flash between coats, um, all that's going to be back here. Now you don't necessarily have to follow all of these rules, but you do need to follow the rules of how to mix the paint. Four parts of this, part A to one part of the B. So what we'll do here is so we're going to want to mix up 16 ounces for this one pack or somewhere around there. So we'll go with with 12. We'll have 12 ounces there. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So three more ounces. So we'll take it up to the 15. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can answer that question right now. It does have UV inhibitors in it, um, just like any clear coat will. Uh, but once again, this is a standard overall clear coat. Um, it's something you would find like uh, in the Sherman Williams uh, finish line, um, something like that. There is other clear coats that have uh, a little more of a, a high solids to it, and, and we'll have those coming out as well. Um, they're still testing. We're still testing those to make sure that everything's good. Yes, Mr. C. My mic was off. Thank you. <laughs> you always help me out with that. Um, I, let's see. I had another question. What do you do when your paint thickens, closes the holes for the bolts after you have finished painting a fender? Sorry, what was that? 
What do you do when your paint thickness closes the holes for bolts after you have finished painting a fender? Yeah, so uh, what I do is I'll get like a, a deep well socket and then I'll wrap it with sandpaper and then I'll just um, clean up that holes, those holes with a socket and wrapped in sandpaper. What he's asking is sometimes um, the paint builds up around the bolt holes like in the fender and you go to pop a bolt through there. What you can do is you can chip the paint out and that sucks when you have brand new paint, <laughs> as you could imagine. So yeah, a socket with some sandpaper, just kind of hone it out. All right, so we got that open. We're gonna we're gonna have the whole package. So this is Limeline Metal Flake, one pack, mixed into 16 ounces of 2K clear coat. But if you didn't want to use clear coat, you could use clear base coat or inner coat clear. Clear coat's better. In my opinion, it's not the only way. Now, one thing with these, very important, if you're using this disposable system, you're gonna to wanna to cut out the flake's not gonna wanna pass through that filter. Cause these are little um, built-in filters in the lids. Super helpful when it comes to ordinary paint, but when it comes to flake, you do need to pull these out. What size is the flake? Uh, it's a mixture of uh, 0.04 and 0.08. And that's the reason why we spray that over black base. If you're spraying big flake like uh, 0.25 or point, uh, 0.025, then you're going to want to use maybe a silver base coat or something like that because you're going to have like a salt and pepper kind of look. Um, but uh, this is the way I prefer to do it over black. It's going to have more of a sparkle. I love the fact that the that it's pre-measured. I haven't checked yet, but do you offer pre-measured pearls? Uh, yes, we do have like a ghost pearl, a ghost purple pearl. Um, and also a lot of our pigment powders do have a pearl in it. Um, we don't have a white pearl yet. Um, pre-measured? Pre-measured, yeah. Yep. It's not in a package, it's in a container. So I'm gonna keep this stored like that. So that way it doesn't, all the flake doesn't flow into the gun. Would you use adhesion promoter on bare metal to then clear coat? Uh, if that's what you were doing, like we were talking about that earlier where you can grind the metal um, and then uh, like put a candy over the top of grind metal usually that's done on top of aluminum from what i understand but if you are going to do that on top of steel you could use an adhesion promoter to to uh, uh help promote that adhesion however you're sure going to have corrosion problems so down the road a little bit of that moisture that's stuck into that metal is going to start to corrode and you're going to be able to see it discolor but does it really matter if you're putting candy over the top? I know we're breaking a lot of rules here when it comes to custom paint. So if you think that something might work, just because I say it doesn't work, doesn't mean it's not going to work. I might say it's not going to work because you may have problems down the road, but things sometimes just have problems down the road. So if you want to break those rules, go ahead and try it out and see how, how it works out because you may be experimenting into something that's new. And uh, so don't let me hold you back. Give it a shot. Could work. What's the tip size of the gun? The tip is a 1.4. I'm using the same gun. When are you getting more, when are you getting more 25 disposable 20 ounce cups? Uh, they should be. Uh, they should be out still. They should be in. 
in stock. Uh, we had some problems with um, those being out of stock on Amazon due to some hazardous material deal that happened with them. Um, that should be all fixed now. So those 25 packs should be on there. Okay, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to do our first coat of flake. In fact, maybe I'll just take you in there with me. I was about a 32 PSI, uh, 32, 36 PSI. Um, really, it kind of depends on the gun. If you're using a 1.3 gun, then uh, usually you're using less pressure than that. Uh, but I'll take you in there. I kind of did show you like exactly how thick of a coat that I'm putting on. So once again, I'm not um, applying this on thick to get full coverage. I know there was a question earlier. We talked about how come um, my paint looks uh, blotchy or an another word that we, we use, the term we use is mottled. Um, it looks mottled looking. Um, a lot of it is because you didn't spend enough time to put on and to build it up with light coats to be able to make it look even. Um, even myself, if I was to try to spray this metal flake on in one coat, and make it 100% uh, uh, covered or close to, it would look mottled and blotchy. I just couldn't do it uh, because it's just the process of building things up slower, um, allowing your solvents to dry and to evaporate and your clear coat to start to harden up because now we have this, we have flake mixed into our clear coat. Since we're spraying lighter coats, it's taking less time for that to dry because we're not trapping the materials um, with a bunch of clear. So if we're just piling it on, think of all of the uh, the reducers and the chemicals that need to release. They're just stuck there. 
they're stuck underneath. And that's why uh, really wet, wet paint jobs take a long time to dry. It's because they're just so, they're piled on there. So uh, we're just doing, we're working things slow. We're, we're building things up. Um, so, and we're actually saving a lot of time because the slower it is, the faster it dries. And once again, less paint we use, which is very important. We don't want to blow all this paint around everywhere if it's not going to go on to the part. And uh, we just want to make sure that we're as efficient as possible. So we're actually ready to go for another coat. I'll just grab that. I'll plug it in real quick. I'll throw another coat on there. And we'll probably do one more after that. Joe sent us a $10 super chat. All right on. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Buy me a cup of Joe. Someone said, show me how you set your gun down so the weight doesn't settle in the gun. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm just setting it up against the wall like this, upside down. The nice thing with these cups, you're able to do that. And then also I like to pull the trigger because there's a little bit of excess that's sitting up in here. If you pull that trigger, it's going to uh, leak down, back down into the cup. We got one more coat to do on this. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'll give it just another minute or two. And then we can put the last coat on there of the, of the flake, and then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and start using just the clear coat over the top. So since we're using 2K clear coat mixed in with the flake, we can just use the same 2K clear coat over the top with no flake in it as we're going. Um, so basically, this is going to get like basically eight coats of clear. Four, three or four of them will end up having the flake in it. The others on top. Uh, we'll be there just so we'll have some substance there to be able to sand it smooth uh, once it's dry. Can you show them what you did to clear the clog again? Oh, yeah. They saw that, huh? <laughs> So um, last time I, when I laid down my gun, I just laid it on its side and it did kind of build up in here. Um, so I noticed when I first started spraying that, that it wasn't coming out because a lot of that was clogged. What I did is when it, once it was plugged in, I just put my finger over the cap and hit it and it you gotta be real careful with that because you can blow up your cups uh, if you do it too much. You just want to hit it a little bit. What it's gonna do is gonna cause back pressure up into that and blow it into your cup if you have a little bit of uh, flake that's starting to form and gather up right there you just blow that in. but just be real careful with that it's all it's actually not really that good for your gun either it puts a lot of pressure on your uh the packing 
stuff like that. But I do it because it's a quick way to get it cleaned out. Hit it there, a couple smacks there, and it's going to fill it up. Bob sent us a $20 super chat. Oh, yes. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Someone wants to know if you can show them what kind of gloves you're using. Gloves? Yeah. Oh, what kind of gloves? Uh, I'm using Ravens. Yeah, they're out there, I saw them. Thanks for the super chat, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Uh, I use these Ravens. I am not a sponsor of Ravens, but those are pretty good gloves. And they're, at least they're decently priced. They're all kind of expensive. Okay, last coat, and then I'll take you in there, and we can look what that last coat looks like, and then we'll get some clear on these. Somebody asked, um, if I use a different colored flake instead of silver, would it still, would you still use black base to give the flake its maximum pop? Um, if you're using smaller flake, like we're using here, it's not like the really huge stuff, then yes, I still would. Right, I sent you a $50 chat. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Which one? Ryan, 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 what up? Ryan, what up? See you forever. See you forever. Thanks, Ry. We got to paint your bike next. I know she, I know she has some pigments up there, some turquoise pigments. I'm ready when, I'm ready when you are. Well, he well, he's actually paint. I'm just gonna help, help. Ooh, that's good. Good for you, Ryan. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, now that we have the metal flake in there, let me take you for a tour, huh? And we're going to go ahead and we'll coat this with a regular clear coat here in a second.
somebody asked a question on fiberglass bearing is an adhesive promoter necessary over the gel coat um i would still do it yes Ernie said, hey, isn't there any other Super Chat athletes? <laughs> hey, Ernie, thanks for having my back. <laughs> you didn't answer. <laughs> I can't answer that question. No. <laughs> put, me in a, on the, put me on the spot. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got a, a little lid here. We need another cup. Here, so we're going to put another cup in. So this is the same clear coat we used before. We'll go ahead and mix this, uh, maybe the same. We'll go ahead and go to the 12. Someone asked, so would it be safe to say that two pouches of flake and two 16 ounce cups of clear to do a bagger? Uh, ye yes, a bagger that didn't have a tour pack. Um, I would say you'd be safe with that, with two packs. Um, if it does have the tour pack and the inner fairing, I would probably go with three packs. I'm using a thick flake. I was wondering if it's better to spray the flake with clear or mix it into my black paint. Uh, you can mix, actually, you can mix it in your black paint and then it was just going to give it a different look. Okay, once again, I just put in the part B. So this is what's going to cause the, uh, this part B is what's going to cause this to chemically harden. Uh, clear coat is made to chemically harden with a part A and part B. So that way it can withstand uh, UVs, it can withstand uh, fuel and um, other, other things that make it more durable because the fact that it's a two part, it's chemically hardening. What size cups are those? The 20 or the 10? Uh, these are the 20. That on and then I've already cleaned out the gun uh, not really that necessary and we also did leave the filter in there too so no reason to pull that out it's cool. all we have is clear coat it's the second good catch today yeah, yeah you got some reflexes there yeah <laughs> being 45 is looking good on me <laughs> you barely knew what age you were turning today thanks to me <laughs> Every year he has to ask me how old he's turning. Not no more. 45 is easy to remember. Okay, we'll 44, see. 44, 43. We'll it'll see. Be tough. Okay, we'll see. It'll if I tough. want a little less glittery look, is a silver pearl better than a silver flake? Uh, you would, yes, you could use a silver. It, uh, pearls usually, I don't know if they really come in a silver. It's usually like they're in a white pearl and then a color. Uh, but yes, you can use a pearl underneath it, and it's actually easier uh, because there's um, less process because there's not the thick flake you got to cover. Um, however, it just doesn't have the sparkle and the bling um, that uh, the flake does, but it does still look great. Uh, and maybe one day we'll do that, do some pearls under, uh, under some candies and see what they look like. Do you do a drop coat on your last coat of clear? A drop coat? Yeah. Uh, we call it a flash coat. Um, it would be like a wetter coat. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll reduce out the clear coat a little bit more with the urethane reducer, and then we can make that a little bit thinner, which will allow it to flatten out a little more. Um, usually you could add up to 20 or 10% uh, of urethane reducer into your clear coat without affecting anything, um, but that will allow it to like level out. I'm not sure if that's what you were talking about. Maybe so, but uh, we call it a a, uh, I forgot what I just called it. Flash. A flash coat. No, <laughs> it's not a flash coat. It's a uh, flow coat. Oh, flow. It's a flow coat. You did say flash, though. I did say flash, and I was like, "What in the hell is a flash coat?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the hell is that? What am I saying?" Flow well, coat. That's what happens when you turn forty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have you done dry flake? Like I used to. It's just like I said, um, you're 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 wetting the surface, 
we clear coat and then you're blowing it on and what it's doing is landing on wet clear coat and it's uh, making a lot of texture. What do you use to clean out your gun? Lacquer thinner. Oh, right now I'm using uh, this cool little gun cleaner can. What speed redu reducer? Uh, medium reducer on everything. I prefer medium across the board. I feel like it's a good medium. <laughs> okay. Let's get some clear coat on these. Once again, you still need to follow the flash times. Um, you don't want to wait too long because if the clear sets up for too long and you go ahead and hammer down more clear coat on top of it, you could have a reaction because your clear is already too dry and too set up in order to accept the solvents that we're spraying on top. Uh, we can go in a little bit more depth if you guys want to about that and what causes that, but um, you just need to make sure you're still following the directions of whatever it says on the clear coat. So we wouldn't want to wait longer than probably a half an hour in between coats because we could have a reaction if we wait too long. Do you ever use sectional cups for cup mixing colors? Uh, uh, what do you use sectional? Sectional? Yeah, I, I guess I don't know what that is. I always heard if you miss the flash time window, you have to wait for it to completely set up and scuff again before you can add a paint job. Is that true? That is correct. Yep, that is correct. Um, and once you, okay, so we have a little bit of time, time of dry time on this, so I can, I can talk about it a little bit. What happens? sometimes um, when you apply paint uh, or a clear coat over a clear coat that's been uh, dry too long say like we were to wait a half an hour and um, sometimes what would happen is once you hit it with a really wet coat it'll start to like crackle and craze it like a um, what's the best way I could say it uh, it just like cracks all over i guess that's the best way i can say it and what's happening is um if you're laying on thick coats of clear coat and you're allowing it to dry for too long what's happening is the clear coat's laying on top of the part so here's the metal here's the base coat here's the clear coat on the top now if the clear coat is thick and it, it what, what happens is it starts to create a little bit of a shell the top is drying faster than the bottom because that's exposed to the air so what's happening is that's creating a, a hard shell because that's what it's supposed to do. Um, once that is set up to the point where it can't remilt back into the next coat because it's already too hard, what's happening is that next wet coat is laying on top 
and the solvents in there are sitting on top of that shell. And if that shell can't quite hold those solvents back, what happens is it melts through and it re-wets the clear coat underneath because it's not as dry. And what happens is imagine like water underneath a road, you know, so you're re-wetting um, a hard surface that's up here. And this is like an earthquake. Like this can't handle all of the, the commotion that's happening underneath here because all of this paint is now wet. That's not supposed to be that wet. So it's moving around. That's moving around. And this is like, boom, cracks because it just can't move with the rest of it because it's she has too hard of a uh, of a shell on top of it that's um uh, that and you're just allowing so if so uh word to the wise that i can tell you about this is if you do happen to wait too long maybe you got caught up um on the phone or something like that and you're like oh i don't know what to do i think i still might make it within this window you know what you want to do is make sure that you're building that up with light coats that way that solvent doesn't have too long of a chance to be able to penetrate through that shell and re-wet that. You'd want to layer a bunch of maybe three light tack coats on the top. So that way you got uh, more of a barrier to wear the wet coat. Because you need to put wet coats when it comes to clear coat. Your last coats need to be wet. It's not like base coat where you can just do dry coats all the way through until it's covered. Clear coat needs to be wet to be able to smooth out, to be able to look good, to be able to gloss out. Uh, base coats aren't like that. So um, just keep in mind that if you do wait a little bit too long, a bunch of tack coats would be able to help um, give that a better layer so those uh, those wet layers can, can lay on the top. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully that helps. That was a lot of words. <laughs> so, so basically they'll shrink at different rates. Gotcha. Yeah, they'll shrink at different rates. There you go. How do you know when to replace the green filter on your gun? Uh, you really don't know. If it starts to um, crack or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, usually these will last for uh, three to four weeks if you're a heavy painter. Uh, three to four months if you're just painting like as a hobby. It all depends on how clean is your air that's going to it, you know? Another Mine's not that clean. Another question someone had was about the leaping when when do I leap after the last clear coat and then when do I leaf after the last clear coat and then more on top of the leaf or should I go back to one of the leaping videos? Okay. I, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know that's why I read it twice because I wasn't sure right here. Um, so yeah, so whatever you apply your leaf to, it needs to be a smooth surface. So, um, let's say like we were to apply a leaf to this afterwards, when we sand that clear coat down, we just need to make sure that that's a smooth surface, um, for that leaf to lay on, especially if we plan on spinning it, uh, because it, it, you just, it needs to lay on a smooth surface in order to look good. Unless it's variegated, stuff like that, you can get away with a little bit of texture. Same pre same air pressure for your top coats uh, of clear? Uh, yeah, same, same pressure. Yep. I actually turned it down just a little bit. Um, air pressure, a lot of times in these mid coats, they really don't matter. I would prefer to actually turn my air pressure down a little bit. It's going to create more orange peel, uh, but you're going to be more efficient. You're going to get more paint on the part by going with the lower pressure less overspray and you really don't care too much about orange peel because really the whole thing is orange peel because it has flake on it so really our goal now is to get more clear coat on it evenly so we can get rid of the texture once we sand it we need to make sure we get enough clear on there that we're not burning through into that um, into that uh, silver metal flake but if that is the case you would scuff it down with like the red scuff pad and then you're going to put it back into clear coat just like we're doing here so if you've got it in flake and it's you're sanding it and it's still too textured, uh, scuff it down, clean it up, put it back in the booth, and give it another uh, three coats of clear coat. Let that dry, and then you're going to be then you're going to be smooth enough to where 
you can scan it and then you're ready to go with the graphics. You ever thought about add, adding colored leaf? Uh, yeah, I do. I did have some samples of colored leaf. I just wasn't, I wasn't real like happy about it, how they looked. I don't know. I may revisit that idea uh, in the future. But for now you can clear candy it. Yeah, you can candy the leaf. Yep. In fact, if you don't let me forget, um, I do have a finished tank that I want to show you guys that does have that candied leaf on it. Um, and maybe I'll show you that here in a second because we are getting towards the end here. I'm going to put another coat on this. So hang on real tight. just write it out. What glass cleaner do you use? Uh, I like to use 3M glass cleaner. Um, one that you probably don't want to use. I noticed I have this down there. Like, I don't know what the heck this is. This is glass cleaner with rain repellent. It's probably something you don't want to use because who knows what rain repellent is. Is it some kind of lubricant or something like that? So be real careful with stuff like this. Is using... A touch method for clear coat or good idea, sticky but not stringy? Yep, yep, touch method. That's a great method. Um, real quick, I can kind of go over that. Um, in an inconspicuous spot on the tank with a gloved hand, you can touch like uh, maybe on the tape. Uh, something you taped out, you can touch on something. And if it strings up, up to the touch, like when you touch it, it strings like cheese, you want to wait. You're going to want to wait a couple more minutes until it doesn't do that. But if, if you touch it and it's tacky, but it doesn't string up, you know, you're good to go with another coat. So that's the best way that I know of to, um, to be able to know to move, if you need to move on to another coat in your, in your wait times in between. Because once again, there's a lot of variables.
longer than two hours. Whoa, you were there. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. Aha. We need to give something away, too. Uh, we're actually we're going to go. Let's give something away. Um, and then we'll go and go ahead and take a look at the finished product of this. And then I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the next uh, tank that I have finished that we have a uh, we have a video of that will be coming out. So you want to hit that, uh, we'll go take a look at these. You want to hit that button there, babe? So you can see how it started, it, it's, it really started to smooth it out. Ah, John Morris. See how it's starting, it has the shine back and um, it really smoothed out the surface. So once this dries tomorrow, we'll go ahead and sand this smooth and then it's ready for graphics. So we can go ahead and tape to it. Um, it's, uh, we're good to do whatever we need to with that. Show you guys that tank, I promised. We still have one more thing to give away. And we'll and we'll give that last thing away before we leave. That way we keep them on the line. I'll go ahead and shut this off too. quieter with that thing off I can hear that's a lot quieter huh so uh so i know a lot of you guys have been with us for a while and you kind of understand the process um i'm gonna kind of go over it a little bit so the we sprayed those in the uh silver flake same thing as we i did here on this hood um so silver flake this is how this is how these are these are built up these are transparent candies um and basically what we're doing is we're applying them over the uh, silver metal flake as you can see here and basically we're just tinting the in that light. we're just tinting the um the silver uh with a transparent color over the top and this is a root beer brown color and all I did was mix the three primary colors together. And uh, but we'll have a video out on this guy this. in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I can do that so they can kind of see it, huh? And I did, I did mention that, so there is the leafing right there. This is copper leaf with a candy brown that's a little bit more on the orange side. Um, sprayed over the top. Is there a lime line polishing and cutting compound? Uh, no, but uh, we prefer to use uh, CSI or CIS. Which one is it? CSI? Yeah. CSI. Uh, you let the metallic sit for a day before handling? Yes, we'll let that. We'll let that sit for a day. And then we'll go ahead and once it's dry after a day, it, it, it depends on the temperatures. Really, you can be it could be twelve hours um, if it's eighty degrees. All right, that's it. We're gonna. If anybody has any questions, you go ahead and put them in real quick. But we're going to give away uh, the last prize. We appreciate you guys all being here. The super chats were great tonight. I really appreciate that from everybody. 
Yeah, thanks guys for the super chats. I get every other one. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, let's do it. Music man, you got it. So um, all the winners that we had today, just go ahead and uh, shoot us an email at, at uh, info at limelinepaintsupply.com. Let us know where you live and we will uh, get those packages out to you. And uh, real quick, if you guys are in the Salt Lake City area, we will be at the Autorama in Salt Lake City at the, uh, in Sandy. Um, and we'll have a, we have a booth set up there and you'll be able to, um, the fact that we have a bunch of these panels that we're going to be practicing, um, laying out some tape, we'll be doing some silver leafing, some gold leafing and, uh, pretty much anything that you want to learn, um, there as far as taping and, and or prepping or anything like that. Um, I'm going to be there to help you guys out. So, um, be cool inter interactive booth, uh, hopefully this year. Um, bring your kids, um, you know, maybe they'll love, maybe they'll love custom paint as, as some as, as much as some of us. Okay. We've been on here for over two hours. And, uh, once again, thanks for the super chats. Thank you for being here. Hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, check out my other videos and, um, all the paint supplies we use is uh, limeline. You can find that on Amazon. Uh, you can find it on uh, Google search. So we have a couple of websites out there. If you are part of the membership program, the big cartel website will give you um, access to that, uh, to put in that discount code. So uh, appreciate you, you members out there. And yeah, thanks for your support. Uh, that's why we come back every week is because you guys show up too. Um, so until then, I guess we'll see you next week. We'll be still working on this FXR. We'll see what we have to do with it. We'll see you next week when Adam's 45. <laughs> <laughs> if he remembers his age. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for the super chats and being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. See you next week.